At the end of the 2002 season, Formula One was in a crisis. With the Ferrari dominance showing no signs of abating and being booed on the podium at the A1 ring, viewership was down with Bernie's very own F1 digital pay-as-you-go service only having 11,000 subscribers. Even Martin Brundle joked with Bernie on the grid saying, if you invited half a dozen friends round, you would treble its audience. Bernie was not best pleased and promised for 2003 there will be change. And change there was, starting with the one thing that is always broken in F1. The qualifying. Oh for fuck's sake. And even David Coulthard was quoted as saying, make no mistake, this is not qualifying, this is a joke. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Complete Guide. This is part 21 and this is Formula 1 2003. Let's have a look at the difficulty level. Just saw the rookie there. This is the semi-pro level as you can see. And as you can also see, the race distance is now in third. So you can do one third, half the race distance or the full race distance. There's no actual in between, which is quite disappointing. And once again, the ABS brakes cannot be switched on in the pro difficulty level. Thankfully though, the effect of the ABS being switched off is not as bad as it was on last year's game. So look at the weather, you can have Heavy rain now as well as light rain and sunshine. And now in cockpit view you can have a dynamic camera which actually follows you as you go around the corners. So look at the controllers now. You can also have the speedster too, the GT force or the driving force. Of course this was the start of the steering wheels really coming to fruition in these driving games. Let's have a look at the uh, aspect ratio. You can have it at widescreen or 4x3 as you can see there. Also let's go to the sound. Now the sound, you have to turn these sound levels down as soon as you get this game. Otherwise you'll end up with tinnitus for the rest of your life because it is really, really loud. Okay. Okay, let's look at the teams for 2003. We've got Ferrari, we've got Williams, we've also got McLaren, then we've got Renault, then we have Sauber, Jordan, the next team is Jaguar, then VAR, and then Minardi, and of course then it's Toyota. Okay, we're going to go into an arcade race, I've picked the Jordan, and we're at Brazil as the lights go out, and it's away we go. Now as you can also see, new for this year, we have a damage indicator in the left hand corner of your screen which slowly goes red the more cars that you hit. And when you fill this damage bar completely up, you get a load of smoke that comes out the back of the car and your uh, pace is significantly reduced until you finish the lap and then it's all repaired and you start again. Yes, so that's the new addition to the arcade mode for 2003. Okay, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the game. Formula One 2003 is a video game based on the 2003 season of the Formula One World Championship. It is the first of the Formula One video game series with an exclusive license from Formula One administration. Developed by Sony Studio Liverpool and published by Sony Computer Entertainment Europe, it was released exclusively for the PlayStation 2 on the 11th of July 2003. The game features all 10 teams and 20 drivers competing in the 2003 season, except for the mid-season changes, as well as the 16 circuits and Grand Prix that form the championship calendar. The game also includes the new one-shot qualifying rules and point system introduced for the season, as well as the alterations to the Hungara Ring and the Suzuka circuit. There are 11 game modes available for single player and multiplayer including single player arcade and simulation, single race, time trial and championship modes. Multiplayer for up to 4 players and a non-interactive spectator mode. Online connectivity was not supported. The solution to teams spending too long in their garages? One lap qualifying which was seen as the perfect way to ensure track action as well as a means to ensure smaller teams got more television exposure. On the Friday of each race weekend the drivers took to the track one at a time in championship order, completing a single flying lap before returning to the pits. The following day the process would be repeated again to decide the final grid order, this time with the slowest driver from Friday going first and the fastest driver last theoretically on the cleanest track. As a further wrinkle, designed to spice up the racing on Sundays and lead to more unpredictability on Saturdays, the drivers had to set their laps on race fuel levels. The problem with this system of course was that at least one driver would almost always be disadvantaged by the running order, either by virtue of track conditions or changeable weather. Even so, one lap qualifying would remain in place for several years. 
So let's have a look at some of the options that are available. You've got Arcade, Arcade Season, a Custom Race, and of course the Full World Championship. We're going to go for a quick race, I do believe. Five laps, I think we're going to pick the Renault of Fernando Alonso. Yes, there he is. And I think we're going to go to Europe, I do believe. Yes, we are. So off to Europe we go. And as you can also see, you can actually adjust your position in the race just by pressing up and down the D-pad. You can start from any position that you want fantastic okay so this is just a quick race i think in the renault with fernando alonso as the five lights go out it's time to say go 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 okay let's look in the top left of your screen you can see there's the mini map which unfortunately only shows your car the car in front and the car behind it will still be a few more years before we get the whole of the field on the mini map and oh my goodness i really didn't expect to do that and no that's not very good at all, but luckily the damage is off at the moment. You can also see the traction control and the brake bias is also fully adjustable. Okay, so let's get into this new qualifying session. You've got Friday qualifying, Saturday practice, Saturday warm-up and Saturday qualifying, of course. And then we've got the race. So we have to go into Friday qualifying. First of all, let's go into it now. So here we go into the Friday qualifying and there's the screen basically but we'll come back to that in a minute because we're going to look at the car setup now and as you can see you have the tyres on dry, intermediate or wet, you have the compound as hard or soft, we can also have the brake type as medium, you can have it as thin brakes or we can have it as thick brakes. You can also adjust the downforce to low downforce, high downforce and so on and so forth and the same with the ride height as well. Let's move on now to the next one. We've got the front bump dampening, which can be adjusted from harsh, medium to soft for the front and the rears. And the same for the anti-roll bars. We can have it on low, medium or high. And the front camber can be slight, major or just in the middle. And the transmission can be semi-automatic or automatic. And on to the steering angle now, which can be medium, mild or sharp. And OK, on to the next setting we can adjust now. And we've of course got the brake balance the central brake balance, the default, it's all there. And the gearbox can be fully adjusted as well. Okay, so we've gone out now onto our session and luckily we don't have to sit there. We can actually watch the replay cameras and watch the other cars go around until it's our turn to go out for our qualifying session. While we're here, I just had to show you the excellent camera view that I was talking about earlier. As you can see, we're in the cockpit view now. And as you go around the corners, you will see that the camera follows your eye line or your helmet, I should say, as you go around the corner. It's absolutely glorious. And of course, for the first time, we've got a fully functioning steering wheel. Oh my God, that wasn't very good, was it? And you've even got a speedo so you can see how fast you're going. And look at this. We've even also got those Colin McRae style arrows to tell you exactly where to go on the track if you don't know the circuits, which you bloody well should do by now. OK, as I said earlier, you can adjust the traction control fully while you're playing the game. Oh my god, are you listening, Codemasters? Anyway, enough of this because it's time for the Monaco test once more. The five lights go out and we say go, go, go. Well, I get off to a fantastic start of the line, get past the Minardi straight away as we go into turn one. Oh my goodness, it looked like a Ferrari slowed right down there. Now, is it going to be a clusterfuck? Oh my god, I plowed straight into the car in front of me. But as you can see, the damage is still off at the moment and we managed to get through quite cleanly as we climb up the hill. Well, what can we say about the graphics? The graphics in this game are absolutely gorgeous. Far, far superior than any Formula One game that has come before it. Yes, Formula One 2003 is the daddy in the graphical department as we go down through the casino section now. Is it going to be tight? No, actually, oh, oh, a little bit tight. Oh, and I've hit the wall. Well, it's okay. We managed to get through now. And now, oh my God, I've been hit up the Jack Jones by, I think, one of the Toyotas. Yes. So we're going to go through the tunnel now. Is it going to be glorious? Yes, it is. Pretty good, as you can see, going through the tunnel. OK then, so now it's time for Dave's notebook. Yes, it's a bit like Ted's notebook, only nowhere near as good. Yes, now when I first played all these games, I had this big, big A4 pad, basically, that I used to write notes into, which uh, was basically like the car setups and everything else, and also any problems with the game. Now, sadly, the notebook has long gone into the dustbin in the sky. But luckily, a lot of the information is still retained inside my head. And that is what I'd like to share with you right now. OK then, so Formula 1 2003, let's get the basics out of the way first. So, first of all, once again, due to licensing, you cannot drive as yourself. You can only drive as one of the drivers in the 2003 World 
Championship. And once again, there's no career mode in this game either. You just pick a team, go to the end, and then start it all over again. Also, sadly, I have to report that in the shorter races of anything less than 100%, none of the cars actually come in for a pit stop but luckily there is now a mid-race save as there was in f1 2002 which basically this game is just an update of yes it's still using the same engine from 2002 they've just updated the teams and of course all the new car liveries but it's basically the same game it wasn't until f1 2004 that they totally rewrote the game engine once more now, all the new rules and regulations didn't come into effect until the first round of the season in March, and of course this game was released in July, so they had very, very little time to make sure that everything was perfect. And unfortunately, everything was not quite perfect. I also believe a little bit of complacency was just starting to creep in because they had the exclusive license, but there can be no doubt about it, this game crashes, and it crashes a lot. One of the most annoying crashes you can have is if you manage to get onto the podium, it crashes just before the podium screen, which if you're doing a 100% race, which is, as I said, is the only way to get pit stops, it's very, very annoying. But there is one way you can get around this. And I always used to do a mid-race save on the very, very last lap of the race. So if it failed on the podium, I could just restart and do the last lap again. And usually it wouldn't fail two times in a row. Now, if anyone remembers the 2003 season, most of the cars stopped three times. This was because they had to use their qualifying tyres for the race. Now, of course, this was basically an update of 2002. So the actual pit stop procedure was probably pretty much set in stone at this point but once again they managed to fool us well everyone except for Dave that is now it's made to look like they're actually pitting three times because a lot of the cars come in on lap five and you think well that's it then they've got to come in again two more times but actually no they stop most of the time on lap five six or seven but they don't stop again until all the way to lap 45 so still doing a two stop strategy when in fact most of the other cars were doing free stops. It's another clever way of trying to confuse you and of course they also had cars that stopped around about lap 22 as well just to add to the confusion. But in the end most of the cars only stop twice. And as you just saw there if you don't press the button once again to inform your pit that you're coming in they will not service your car. Okay, so it's time for a pit stop now. Let's see what glory awaits us as we go into the pit lane. We've chosen to go on to the dry tyre, because that's how we go around here. And in we come for our stop. As you can see, the fuel goes in. The tyres are changed rapidly, and someone's still touching the front of my bloody car. But away we go. As you can also see, the pit stops in 2003 seem to be a lot faster than they were in 2002. And we rejoin the field probably in bloody last place. Okay, on to my favourite part of the show now. It's time to test the damage model. We're at Brazil and I'm in the Jaguar and oh my bloody good call, I don't believe it. Horsey, Horsey already has lost her front wing. Her front wing has gone and she's got some tyre damage or something like that anyway. I think she may have a puncher. I don't bloody well know. Now once again, of course, you can only go a quarter of the way around the circuit before it resets you back the right way around the track. We turn those horrible Horrible penalties off as you can see. Just a bit of front wing damage for Horsey there. Let's see what we're... Wait a minute, what's this? Who the bloody... Oh my god, it's Kimmy! It's Kimmy Riken and I ploughed straight into the back of him. He was upside down anyway, like an upside down turtle. But I've made to put him around the right way. Oh my god, Kimmy! Okay, let's see if we can do our usual roadside assistance to Kimmy then. And uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's gone, I don't believe it! Yes, finally the cars are cleared off the grid. Okay, let's see if we can cause some more damage for Horsey. Oh my goodness, bloody good gold gracious. Oh, she's upside down now and she's... Oh, come on. Oh, and she's retired. Oh my god. I, oh, wait a minute. And the game's crashed. Uh, whoopsie. Okay, let's uh, restart that, I do believe. Yes, and see if we can have another go. Now let's see how we can do. Oh my god, straight... Oh no, Horsey. Horsey's flying like she's never flown before. 
Oh no, and she's lost the wheel, and she's retired again. I don't bloody well believe it. Okay, let's have another go now and see what more damage we can cause. Of course, the physics damage model in this game is absolutely fantastic as we plow straight into the back of an RD. Oh my god, look at this. There's front wings gone everywhere. There's a salvo off to the right hand side, and I've plowed into the back of a ju Excuse me, sir. Could you get out of the bloody way? I'm trying to do a race here, for God's sake. He's going very, very slow. I think he's got a lack of front wing, as you can see, but I managed to get past him. Oh my god, he's just ploughed straight into the back of me. Wow, that's very, very uncalled for, sir. That's very, very rude indeed. I'm just trying to... Thank you. I've got past, finally, the jaunters. Oh my god, he's done it again. He's piped me straight up the shifters. Well, that was absolutely outrageous. Let's see what more damage we can do. Oh my goodness gracious me. And Horsey's now lost her wing once more. And now she's done a complete flip. And look at that BAR. Oh my goodness. There's wings once. And oh God's sake, I've retired again. So there you go, everyone. That's the damage model in Formula 1 2003. Now, sadly, in F104, they did tone down a lot of these uh, ridiculous physics for the damage that you could cause, which was a bit of a shame because it was always very, very enjoyable after a hectic day's racing to just go round backwards and smash into all the cars. But there you go, that's progress for you. Okay, so let's go into summary now. Is this game worth buying? Well, once again, I would have to say yes, yes, yes. Although there are quite a few bugs in this game and it does crash a lot, but as I've explained earlier, there are ways around most of the problems in this game so of course there are two things to remember number one of course that absolutely delicious handling model and number two this was of course exclusive to PlayStation 2 so it was the only way you could play Formula 1 2003 was on the PlayStation which is how it should always be <laughs> I'm so biased Okay then, so once again you can probably pick this up from your local eBay or Amazon merchant for possibly a couple of pounds or maybe four or five euros, but you have to look out because once again it is quite rare to find this game because they didn't actually make that many copies. But if you do, it'll be time for another slice of PlayStation history. Thanks so much for watching everyone, there will of course be more later.